uh, I would like to uh, deliver uh, Dr. Muhammad Nakib Nasrullah to deliver his speech. After uh, Nakib Nasrullah, then we will listen uh, to Dr. Mirza Ghalib. The topic uh, on what uh, Dr. Uh, Nakib Muhammad Nasrullah will speak today about uh, two issues. The one is the role of law and state in combating Islamophobia. And another topic he will cover that is Islamophobia, human rights implications, and related positive state obligations. So on this two particular topic, I would like to speak to Professor Dr. Nakib Muhammad Nasrullah, uh, a professor of Department of Law, University of Dhaka. Thank you very much, uh, dearest moderator. Am I audible to you all? Yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the organizers for organizing such a wonderful, uh, the organizing a discussion on such a wonderful issue. This is for the first time that you uh, I'm uh, coming across the uh, Islamophobia and the international aspects. And uh, from the perspective, perspective of the international law, as you have uh, assigned me to talk about. And uh, this is uh, quite interesting. But um, uh, the, the, uh, the keynote space, which was delivered by Saidul Islam, that's so wonderful. This is very comprehensive work. And uh, he tried to cover everything. I'm very much impressed with this presentation and the issues he mainly brought in. And uh, I think uh, it is, uh, I have learned many things from it. And he actually talked about from sociological perspectives. And actually the point points uh, he raised in terms of the counter, uh, uh, encounter the, the present situations was were really wonderful. Nevertheless, the despite the hectic time that I am passing through, because uh, this is at the end of the sessions, I am preparing the results, marking the the answer scripts, and only due to your honor, so. Uh, I never wanted to miss this time, and I'll simply focus on this issue for a few minutes. I cannot even stay longer with you. And the thing is that the issue you have selected for me, uh, you could have uh, informed me before uh, the, so that I could have uh, focused on this uh, rightly. Nevertheless, I'll try to focus on this uh, from that perspective, the how Islamophobia the in affects the human rights, and uh, the few the initiatives have been taken uh, to mention specifically that the uh, United Nations General Assembly adopted in two thousand one a resolutions uh, resolutions uh, at the request of. Uh, the uh, YC, yeah, to the uh, uh, YC to encounter the such a situation, the Islamophobia. And uh, I will also focus on that issue. As uh, the author mentioned that uh, the Islamophobia, the Islamophobia that leads to the different uh, situations. But if we look at from the human rights perspective, we find that, in fact, it leads to uh, some kind of the intolerance against the Muslim, a kind of the anti-Muslim outrage, a kind of uh, the intimate, and the, a kind of the discrimination against the Muslims. And we have seen that in different countries, especially, uh, I would like to mention, about the America, and even after 9-11, the only the name of Muhammad and Khan, if the, these two names are found at the moment of the, the uh, visa process, or the, the moment of the entry into the, into, into the American territory, then the person would have been abstracted and person would have been checked. 
only because these two words, what is Khan and other the Muslims. So these types of the discrimination was made against the Muslims after 9-11. And one of my friend, when I was the, doing my PhD in Australia, and she was from the Iran, she told me several times they uh, applied for the visa. Even he's not even, she, she was not even the belonging to Muslim, the political, polit the Iranian the present regime. She was quite anti-Iranian regime, nevertheless. She was denied her visa. And even her family's visas, uh, visa was denied only because they're from uh, Iran. And even we find that uh, if somebody visits Pakistan, and Afghanistan, even for any academic purposes, like once upon times when I went to America, I placed uh, my passport for the visa. And I was scared about whether I'll be given the visa or not because before, some days before I uh, be visited uh, in, uh, Lahore to attend a seminar organized by the ICS. And this type of discrimination was done against the Muslims. And we find that uh, like America, other countries were influenced. And the visa was actually the different type of the visa that was denied for some countries of uh, Af uh, African countries. Most of the countries were the Muslim countries. So a kind of the discrimination was created due to this sort of the Islam phobia. And these three things, one is the intolerance, which was created against the Muslims, an anti-Muslim hatred, and another is the discrimination. These three things, these three things, uh, they involves the application of the human rights. Because we know that the discriminations, uh, the whoever he is, if somebody wants to have the visa, somebody wants to have passport to apply for the visa, if he is or she is eligible, he deserves to have the visa. But he is discriminated against, if she is discriminated against, that will be the violation of the human rights. And because of this Islamophobia, the states were influenced and they were politically motivated. And the anti-Islam sentiment motivates them not to issue their visa. This is the question of the violation of the human rights. And another thing is that, that uh, we, it is the freedom of religion which was recognized by uh, uh, by the uh, 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 International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And under Article 18, it is the freedom of religion and freedom of belief is recognized. So a Muslim having belief in Islam is not a crime, but it was said to be, they uh, said to have, they, it was considered to be a crime, even we find that even in, in, in a place, the, we try to be Muslim, try to be secular, uh, hiding their, concealing their identity, only because if they identify themselves as a Muslims, so others will start, hat start uh, hating him. So this was the situation and which was created due to this Islam phobia. So it, it infringes, uh, the influences upon the freedom of religion, freedom of belief, and a kind of the perpetual discrimination was created due to this Islamophobia. And uh, the, this, this type of, and the, a kind of the hostility and the violence was uh, hanged against the Muslim across the globe. And uh, as the author mentioned, different countries, and it is true that uh, the, the, this type of the is the, when the Islamophobia spread over the most of the Western countries, then this type of the treatment uh, started against uh, the Muslims. And uh, uh, it is quite true that uh, the media propaganda contributed much to the creation of this type of the situations. And uh, this is this type of the this is not the freedom of uh, uh, the freedom of uh, the expression because if the freedom of expression in terms of the human rights, uh, the human rights according to the, the international documents. So media cannot do anything. That creates a blasphemy, a kind of the hatred against any 
the, the people having their religious belief in any, anything like the Muslims, the Hindus, Buddhism, and in Christianity. So, therefore, we find that uh, this type of Islam phobia has spread it and uh, they institutionalized by US and other Western countries. And through the through media campaign and their uh, the interstate uh, initiatives, initiatives created a kind of the violation of the human rights against the Muslims. And uh, the, the Muslims uh, used to be, they considered a suspicious group of the, group of the persons. And uh, this type of the negative attitude, the, because the, the Islam was misrepresented by them, as the author mentioned, that uh, the Sharia, they, they used to mean by the Sharia uh, only the, this is the kind of the punishment. And there are different provisions of the Islams. Uh, they misinterpreted it. And uh, this type of the misinterpretation, the Islam was uh, interpreted by them in, in such a way that creates a kind of the racism against the Muslims. So Islam phobia, in conclusion, I want to say that uh, the violence leads to the violation of the Leads, uh, leads to the violation of the different human rights uh, against the Muslim activists that we love. And how, uh, the, uh, the, what, uh, what actually was the, the, in, uh, the international response? I would like to mention one international response uh, when Islamophobia uh, spread over, uh, over the world, then then uh, many uh, government, uh, then uh, the United Nations, General Assembly, General Assembly formed a, a report here group to find out uh, the reasons and uh, they find out the, 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 the conduct a kind of the investigation. And uh, after the investigation was uh, the conducted by Mr. Ahmed Bashir, then uh, United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution. And that resolution was sponsored by 60 member states of the WISE, and uh, which, uh, the, uh, which was designated as the International Day, actually designated the International Day to combat Islamophobia. They, they selected a day. On that day, the WISE will observe International Day to combat Islamophobia. And this document, the resolution, which was uh, taken by the United Nations, stresses uh, on uh, that the terrorism and the violent extremism cannot and should not be associated with any religion, any religion, and uh, with any civilization and any ethnic because always we see that the terrorism is always carried out by a small <laughs> fractions of the people, whoever they are. They could be the Muslims, but they do not represent the whole Muslims. For example, say, in a conference even in Bangladesh here, the, as the author mentioned, the keeping beard symbolizes that he is from the like this group of the persons, even. And, uh, even in our society in Bangladesh, even university level, it is quite uh, of, uh, the. It is often said that uh, the the women who are veiled, they are they are, they are like the terrorists. Yes, they have got the they they have like even in Dhaka University, a kind of uh, the rules of the uh, the rules have been adopted and few days a uh, few days back. That is that. Uh, no one can appear in the exam veiling his hard head uh, and ears. But he, she has, she have, they have to, the women have to keep their the head and the ears open. Okay, so that they cannot uh, look like uh, a terrorist. So this is the situation. And it's, uh, this type of the, the, the cultural attack the anti-Islamic attack has been created in a, uh, and uh, being hatched against the Muslims. So therefore, the, 
this as this is the dress of the ice and because it is the it is popular this term terminology is, has been popularized that uh, yes the the veiled women and the, the like a kind of the dress that uh, is worn by the ayes is the the islamic dress and this dress means that uh, the the tarius dress and therefore the here that uh, this uh, document stresses that the any kind of the violent extremism because the taliban do not represent the whole muslims and the is do not represent the muslims represent the muslims so therefore this declaration has a stress on these things another thing that uh, this declaration uh, that you sorry this uh, the resolution this resolution uh, the uh, this resolution and the another thing in this resolution has uh, declared that uh, the global dialogue should be the uh, called up on the promotion of the cultural tolerance and therefore it put more emphasis on the interfaith talks because uh, interfaith talks because uh, the saints of the different uh, the religious group should call upon the uh, call upon the dialogues among themselves and to counter this situation to combat these situations they should come up uh, to undertake the measures and this uh, and the interfaith uh, and the, the cultural tolerance peace and the respect for the human rights and the religious uh, the harmony all these things uh, have been addressed uh, by this resolution that uh, international community should come up and uh, the take measures to implement these things and very important thing is the antonio gutar is the president uh, the uh, secretary general secretary general uh, they made a statement and he said that he said on the day the first day to mark the international day to combat uh, slum phobia in 2021 he said that anti muslim bigotry is a part of larger trend of uh, resurgence in uh, ethno nationalism nazi new nazism and stigma and hate speech targeting vulnerable the populations including muslims jews some minority and christian community etc and he, he said that this type of propaganda islam phobia creates a kind of exclusion culture but but we are the human being we need to establish the culture of inclusion and he also referred to the quranic verses in a quranic verses that it has been mentioned that the nations the tribes are created to know each other and, uh, and finally he is he also stated let us keep working together to advance the shared values of inclusion tolerance and mutual understanding values that are at the heart of all major faiths and the united nations charter and one thing uh, i i need to mention that what muslims uh, community should uh, they undertake at this time what major they can undertake only the thing is that you all know that uh, all the this type of the islam phobia has been hashed and they has been carried out against the muslims because the muslim is a nation Muslim is a nation who belong to such a religion, and that religion is the only authentic religion. And based upon that religion, they created such a unity among themselves. If these forces, the uh, these forces organized against the Western world, against the non-believers, so they they can win over them. and uh, and 
because that Muslim is a threat, Muslim is a power, Muslim is a strength, and they they believe in a God, they believe in Allah, and Allah is, is a Allah, and they are very much determined and they stick to their religion, and this is the fear the Allah has cherished in their mind. So they never want that Muslim will get united at a certain point. So therefore, through the media and through their political mechanism in the Western world and also in other countries, even in the secular, the minds of the secular people, they want to the put that the, this Muslim means the liberal kind of the Muslims, Muslim means a kind of the who are like the saint, who are like the army. They do not in, uh, engage themselves in politics. They will always be away from the politics. So this type of the, of the sentiment, they want to create the minds of the Muslims so that they can take the advantage. Whenever you find that to be, whenever it's the American and other countries, if they find that uh, the Islamists, the Muslims who follow them and uh, who they uh, follow their culture, so they, they are very blood to them. But those who raise the slogans to establish Islamic re realm, Islamic uh, the state, and then they, became, uh, they become uh, hostile to them. And therefore, what Muslims should do? The, I define one thing that Muslims are very, uh, the Muslims lag behind from establishing peace and security across the globe. Only the thing that you know that the United Nations was established to maintain and establish international peace and security. And like a, a friend of mine in America who said to me, what is the contribution of the Muslim world? to stop, stop with peace and security. But we are actually, the, uh, we have the legacy of stop, establishing peace and security as Prophet established uh, the very basic principles uh, as to how the security and peace could be established across the globe through the Medina Charter. And the Muslims, they, they do not play that they are right, they, they are, uh, the proper roles, like YC. What YC is that doing at this moment? They have no plan, they have no initiative to the parallelly work, uh, 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 parallelly work, to, uh, uh, work to establish peace and security across the globe. So therefore, to encounter these situations, and uh, I think that uh, Muslim world should uh, get united and Muslim world should at the same time, parallel to United Nations, we undertake the measures to establish peace and security against the globe. And thereby, the real Islamic teaching will be preached to, the, the, to every nation. So with the people, the eyes, I have seen many people who actually go against the Islam only because of the shortage of the knowledge. They lack knowledge in Islam nothing else. So therefore the real knowledge and understanding of the Islam should be praised, should be spread throughout uh, the globe and Muslims should undertake measures to establish peace and security alongside the United Nations. That yes. Muslims only do not uh, the, engage themselves in politics uh, to establish Islam, rather to establish peace irrespective of the the division, uh, irrespective of uh, the religion and uh, caste, creed, uh, and the cultures. Yes. And thereby, I think that the uh, Muslim can uh, win over and uh, tackle these situations and uh, can uh, get rid of this kind of the stigma. So the at the end, I would like to uh, uh, the straight my heartfelt thanks uh, to the, uh, the, the keynote paper presenter, presenter. It is uh, really he presented a wonderful paper and covering everything. Uh, I have been personally benefited uh, by his uh, the words and statements and, and his speech. Thank you very much for inviting me.
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Nokib Muhammad Nasrullah. Uh, he has mentioned uh, so many points uh, in his deliberation. One point he particularly emphasized that is uh, cross-cultural dialogue and harmonization in the society. So uh, this center, World Muslim Heritage Research Center, provide a platform for scholars and researchers from different parts of the world to collaborate and exchange ideas, as well as to share the findings with the wider public thought through conferences, seminars, webinars, and publications. At the same time, we also offer educational programs and resources to help increase understanding and appreciation of Muslim heritage among students, educators, and the general public. Through this way, we serve as an important resource for advancing knowledge and understanding of the contributions of Muslim world to human civilization, which can help to increase understanding and appreciation of diverse cultures and promote cross-cultural dialogue. That is very much important. And Dr. Nasrullah also mentioned this particular point. And we believe that this can lead to a greater cooperation and collaboration between people of different backgrounds and help to build more harmonious and inclusive societies. So harmonious and inclusive society is very much important in the current world to establish peace that is very much important and that is related, that is delivered by Professor Nasrullah. And we believe that it is important to recognize and celebrate the contributions of all cultures and civilizations to human knowledge and progress. So once again, I would like to give thanks to Professor Nasrullah to mention rightly the point that we were actually work throughout the years.